Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lilo and today we're talking about the legendary greatness of Robin's backstory. Stay steady in the pursuit of your dreams and goals. You're born to win. You're made for greatness and I definitely believe in you guys. Keep up the great work each and every day. So this whole backstory has a big chunky supply of references to Joy Boy and I recommend everyone reread it who's caught up with the current chapters of One Piece. We're introduced to the island Ohara and this is our first time seeing the West Blue. This completely changed the way I viewed Ohara's YouTube channel name now. Here we see the One Piece world 20 years ago with baby Robin as the MC. Her island doesn't know much about devil fruits, and since Robin has devil fruit powers, she's outcasted and treated like garbage. Ohara contains the world library inside of the Tree of Knowledge. It's the greatest library in the world of One Piece, and with the One Piece Earth being twice to dozens of times larger than our actual Earth, being the number one library in a world that big is a pretty big deal. The One Piece world government executes anyone they catch trying to study the Poneglyphs or the Void Century. The Void Century is a 100 year gap in history that no one knows anything anything about, and the Poneglyphs are mysterious blocks of stone with secret information written on them that no one knows anything about, and no one knows where the stones even come from. But the scholars of Ohara are mysteriously willing to risk their lives to study both of these things anyway. Researching the Void Century has been forbidden for the last 800 years in the One Piece world, meaning that the Void Century was at least 800 years ago. It's implied that the last time the gum gum fruit was awakened was 800 years ago as well. We don't know who awakened the fruit. 800 years ago, but a lot of people think it was Joy Boy. If that's true, then Joy Boy was likely alive during the Void Century too. Saul is found by Robin washed up on the shore, and since he's still breathing that nice, nice oxygen, it means he can swim and he doesn't have devil fruit. Saul is the first giant that we've seen in the series with a middle initial D, and Saul reveals that there are gentle giants implied to be from different islands other than Elbath, showing us that characters with the D initial can be species other than humans. Spandine is Spandum's dad, and he's the main big boy villain of this flashback. The two soldiers that are with Spandine, we don't know their names or much about them, but they are likely previous generation members of CP9 because they appear to use Saru and they personally guard the director just like the CP9 does currently. It would be interesting to see how strong these characters are. They may actually still be living as members of CP0. The five elders still existed 20 years ago. I wonder if it was the same five elders, and honestly, I wonder how old the five elders are now. Maybe they've all been mutated by Vegapunk to live for hundreds of years or something. It's also revealed that the Poneglyphs are scattered all around the world, but we don't know who scattered them, and we don't even know why they scattered them. The scholars are rounded up, and it looks like they might get executed. Then, one of the scholars stands up and starts preaching some of those juicy details. Some of the One Piece Five elders were on the phone, and the scholar says, Hey, listen up, boss. We read some of those stones. Okay, we read some of those stones. We know that the Void Century happened at least 800 years ago. And guess what? We know that the world government formed 800 years ago as well. You dirty Dans have forbidden researching these stones because these stones contain secrets about the Void Century that you guys don't want anyone else to know. That's why there's a 100 year gap in the history. You guys are the one who erased the history. So at this point, I wasn't sure if the scholar was telling the truth or if he was just muttering some like conspiracy theory jargon, but then right as the scholar's about to drop the name of one of the islands from the void century, the elders on the phone completely changes up and says, kill them, kill them, they know too much. Like, and I was like, what the heck? Like, I honestly, that, that scene felt like a scene from a sci-fi thriller, and it, it turns out all the wild stuff that scholar was saying was actually true. The scholars were all killed, Akainu was revealed for the first time, and he's killing civilians, you know, just normal Akainu stuff. The tree of knowledge is burned to the ground, Aokiji turns Saul into a a freezy pop and Saul dies smiling, showing us that all characters with a D initial in One Piece die smiling. Robin sees everyone she knew and loved get burnt to a crisp, then she's put on a raft made out of twigs and dirt leaves, pushed out to sea by Aokiji, and Aokiji's basically like, so uh, look, I, I know you're like what, like five years old or something, but uh, the whole world's gonna try and kill you now. Um, and yeah, we're giving you a pretty big bounty. Uh, 79 million. Uh, you're welcome. Let me just give you a quick rundown on, on, on how things are really going for you. So first off, you got no friends and uh, no family. They're all burning in that fire over there, as I'm sure you can see. Uh, and yeah, and legit, the entire world wants you dead. Well, and, and it's like, and to be honest, even if you had no bounty in this world, your odds of surviving are still pretty low because uh, there's monsters and, and just, just all kinds of stuff. Oh, boy, it, it, it's bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, so either live your life as a recluse or just die. 
oh yeah, and if I uh, ever see you again, I'll kill you. Okay, bye. And um, so that's what Robin was left with at uh, eight years old. Most pirates who have big bounties are actually strong enough to protect themselves. Robin was a legit eight-year-old child, so weak that even the civilians tried to kill her, and she still survived anyway. I mean, putting that in perspective, it's basically like she beat Elden Ring without touching any grace points along the way. Also, her stealth and intelligence was so good that the Marines didn't get any pictures of her from age eight all the way to age 28. That's why her bounty was just still her as a child, even when she was an adult. And Robin surviving all this crazy stuff proves that she had to become pretty powerful in order to survive those One Piece streets. And honestly, she'd probably do better in a fight against powerful opponents than most people would expect. So this flashback concludes showing us that for the past 20 years, every group Robin joined betrayed her and tried to get her killed the moment they saw the smallest fraction of how much trouble she actually was. Like they would see one strong Marine show up and they instantly just abandon Robin, try and turn her into the Marines, all this stuff. Then we return to the present moment and we see the Straw Hats. The Straw Hats are the first crew to see the full picture of how big the evil chasing Robin really is. It's it's not just a couple strong Marines here and there that are after Robin. It's literally the entire world is after Robin. Basically, Robin's like an Eldian from Attack on Titan just living in the One Piece world. And Luffy sees this and his response is, I don't give one singular big one. She is my homie, let's throw hands. And that's exactly what he does. This entire flashback builds up to the beautiful scene where Luffy asks Robin if Robin wants to live, and she yells out that she actually does indeed want to live, which all her life she was told was a forbidden desire for her to have, and that her being alive was a sin all by itself. So for her to finally find people 20 years later that actually care about her the way that Saul promised that she would find, and they actually care about her even after seeing how big of an enemy she really has, and they want her to live a happy life even though no one else her entire life has wanted that. It's some really amazing writing. I mean, even if you just watch the I want to live clip with no context, it still hits incredibly hard. But then you you watch that clip immediately following the flashback and it just slaps extremely hard. And also the vice admirals were way stronger in the previous generation. Like, holy moly, man. But yeah, that was everything I wanted to say for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know what video you guys would like to see next. Thank you guys for watching. And and I will see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day.